Hello, welcome back to the brand new session of Certified Ethical Hacking Program. In this session, we are going to discuss the second step of system hacking and that is escalating privileges. In earlier session, we discussed about the gaining access, right? In gaining access, we discussed about the cracking password and the vulnerability exploitation. But in this step, we are going to discuss escalating privileges, which is a second step of system hacking. So escalating privileges is the second stage of the system hacking attackers use password obtained in the first step to gain access to the target system and then try to attain higher level uh, privileges in the system and this particular uh, section we will discuss various tools and techniques attackers use to escalate their privileges. So basically privileges are a security rule assigned to users for using specific program features, operating systems function, files or corrects, etc. to limit their access by different types of users. If a user is assigned more privileges, he she can modify or interact with more restricted parts of the systems or application than less privileges to users. So the privileges escalations attacks is the process of gaining more privileges than uh, were initially acquired. So in a privileges escalation attacks, attackers first gain access to the network using a non-admin user account and then try to gain administrative privileges. Then attackers employ design flaws, programming errors, bugs and configuration oversights in the operating system and software application to gain administrative access to the network and its associated applications. So once an attacker has gained access to the remote system with a valid username password, he or maybe she will attempt to escalate their user accounts to one with increased privileges. Uh, you can say for example such as that of an administrator to perform restricted operations, right? Uh, these privileges allow the attacker to view critical sensitive information, delete files or install malicious programs such as viruses, trojans, worms and so on, right? So let's discuss about the type of uh, privileges escalation. So there are two types of uh, privileges escalations right uh, vertical privileges escalations and horizontal privileges escalations so the first is uh, horizontal uh, in a horizontal privilege escalation the authorized user tries to access the resources functions and other privileges that belongs to an authorized user who has similar access permissions so for instance online banking user a can easily access users b bank account so that is you know how we can work with that then vertical privileges escalation in a vertical privileges escalation the unauthorized user tries to gain access to the resources and functions of a user with higher privileges such as application or site administrator for example someone using online banking can access the site using administrative functions so well next is privileges escalation tools so you know guys there are a lot of techniques uh, where we can work with privileges escalation using dll hijacking maybe by exploiting vulnerabilities using uh, you know dlib hijacking maybe using specter and uh, you know meltdown vulnerabilities maybe using a named pipe uh, immersionation so there are a lot of exploitation technique in a privileges escalation but you know uh, the overall the topic is what kind of tools which we can use for these particular techniques in privileges escalation so you know uh, the privileges escalation tools such as b root you know um, lean post packs that uh, windows exploit suggester etc allow attackers to run a configuration assessments on a target system to find information about the underlying vulnerabilities services file and you know directory permissions kernel versions architecture and so on so using this information, a taker can further find a way to exploit and elevate, uh, you know, uh, their privileges on the target system. So I have added a lot of tools on my this slide so we can use those particular uh, tools. And obviously we will have a demonstration in the lab demonstration session. So the next question is how we can defend against privileges escalation? So you know the best countermeasure against privilege escalation to ensure that users have the lowest possibility uh, possible privileges that are uh, you know adequate uh, to use their system effectively. So thus even if an attacker succeed in gaining access to the low privileges account they will not be able to gain administrative level access. Often flaws in programming code allow such escalation of uh, privileges on the target system but as uh, started earlier uh, 
an attacker can gain access to the networking using non-administrative account and then gain higher uh, you know higher privileges of an administrator so i have mentioned 20 points in my particular slides which you can have a look and uh, you can uh, get the exact clarity about these particular 20 points and you can work on those particular points well now we have come across the step number three that is maintaining access well i am repeating again the first step of system hacking was gaining access the second step was escalating privileges now the third step came maintaining access so you know uh, after gaining access and escalating privileges on the target system now attackers try to maintain their access for further exploitation of the target system or make the compromised system a launchpad from which to attack other system in the network so attackers remotely execute malicious applications such as keyloggers spyware and other malicious program to maintain their access to the target system and steal critical information such as username and password so attackers hide their malicious program or files using rootkits, steganography, NTFS, data stream, etc. to maintain their access to the target system. So here I have kept my first point executing application in the uh, maintain, maintaining access point or you can say state. So once attacker gain higher privileges in the target system by trying various privileges escalation attempts, they may attempt to execute a malicious application by exploiting a vulnerable uh, to vulnerability to execute arbitrary code so by executing malicious applications the attacker can steal personal information gain unauthorized access to uh, system resources cracking password capture screenshot install a backdoor for maintaining to as he access etc so you know attackers execute malicious application at this stage in the process called awning the system come on one more time awning the system so once they acquire administrative privileges they will execute applications and then attackers may even try to do so remotely on the victim's machine to gather the same information as above so you know the malicious programs attackers execute on the target system can be backdoor can be crackers can be key loggers can be spyware you know we will uh, discuss these kind of uh, uh, threats in the next chapter in which we will discuss about the malware and threats then the next point is remote code execution techniques uh, which is coming to the uh, executing application uh, platform in the maintaining access so you know remote code execution techniques are various tactics that can be used by attackers to execute malicious code on a remote system uh, these techniques are often performed after compromising a system initially uh, and further expanding access to the remote system present on the target network so there are some examples which i have kept on my slide uh, exploitation for client execution maybe service execution windows management instrumentation then windows remote management system as well well there are some tools for executing applications uh, Tools used for executing application remotely help attackers perform various malicious activities on the target system. So after gaining ad administrative privileges, attackers use these tools to install, execute, delete or modify the restricted resources on the victim system. So here uh, there are some tools which we can use uh, like, you know, damware, remote support, maybe Ninja, Puppy, PDQ, Deploy, maybe Manage Engine, Desktop Central, PS Execution. So, you know, along with that, that there are a lot of tools which you can find out on Google and we can use for the windows as well well after executing application there is second point in the maintaining access that is hiding files so you know after an attacker has performed malicious operations that is executed malicious application on the target system to gain uh, you know escalated privileges he she uh, you know embeds and hides his her malicious program the attacker can do using the rootkits, NTFS stream and steganography techniques etc. to prevent the malicious program from protective applications such as antivirus, anti-malware and anti-spyware application installed on the target system. Such as you know as such a hidden malicious file allow the attacker to maintain their direct access to the system even in the future without the victim constant. So this section describes various techniques used by the attacker to hide their uh, malicious files. So you know there are a lot of you know 
uh, applications like root kids then uh, the root kit is a uh, important part of the hiding files so you know we will have a discussion in the lab demonstration session that how we can work with the root kids well the third point which is the last point in the maintaining access that is the establishing persistence so basically you know attackers create a persistence by executing malicious code on the target device by tricking the victim into accessing a malware loaded file or downloading a malicious program so the persistent enable attackers to in fact different components of the system continuously and to remain undetected against any defensive solution so once persistence is successfully established the backdoor channel will create for the attacker through which they can perform malicious activities as the malware replicates itself even if the target system reboots so this section will describe various dis techniques used by attackers to maintain persistent on the target system network so you know there are a lot of uh, you know techniques uh, like maintaining persistence by uh, abus abusing boot or logon uh, auto start execution then domain dominancy through different paths remote code execution you know so there are a lot of things which we will discuss in the uh, lab demonstration session as an hands on particular uh, topic okay so the last step of the system hacking is clearing logs well once again i am repeating for you guys for the clarity the first step in the system hacking was gaining access the second was escalating privileges and third is maintaining access fourth which we are now covering tracks and that is a clearing logs or you can say covering tracks so basically in the last session in the previous video we have learned the gaining access and in this session or in this video we discussed about the escalating privileges maintaining access and now we will discuss about the clearing logs so in the previous section we saw how an attacker can hide malicious files on the target computer using various stenographic techniques and tfs stream and other techniques to maintain further access to the target so once the attacker succeed in the performing this malicious operations the next step involves removing any result and traces tracks in the particular system so covering track is one of the main stages during the system hacking in this stage the attacker tries to hide and avoid being detected or traced out by covering all tracks or logs generated while accessing the target network or computer so we now look at how the attacker removes the traces of an attack on the target computer so erasing evidence is a must for any attacker who you like uh, you know to remain abs uh, abscore so it is method used to evade a trace back it starts with erasing the com uh, you know containment logs and possible error message generated in the attack process so you know the attacker max changes to the system configuration such that is does not log the future activities by manipulating and tweaking event logs the attacker tricks the system administrator into believing that there is no malicious activity in the system and there uh, that no intrusion or compromise has taken taken place so because the first thing a system administration uh, administrator does when monitoring unusual activity is check the system log files it is common for intruders to use a tool to modify these logs in some cases rootkits can disable and discard all existing logs but attackers removes only those por uh, portions of logs that can reveal their presence if they intend to use the system for a long period as a uh, you know launch base for future exploitation or something like that so attackers must make that the system appears as it did before access was gained and a backdoor was established this allow uh, them to change any file attributes back to their original state the information listed such as file size size and date is just attribute information contained in the file so you know protection against attackers trying to cover their tracks by checking file information can be difficult so however it is possible to detect whether an attacker has done so by calculating the file's cryptographic hash so this type of hash is a calculation of entire file before encryption so you know a attacker may not wish to delete an entire log to cover their tracks as doing so may uh, require admin privileges if a attacker can delete only attack event logs they will still be able to uh, you know escape the detection so the next point is clearing logs 
So clear event view log dot bad. As you can see that this is the uh, utility, right? That can be used to wipe out the logs of the target system. So this utility can be run through command prompt PowerShell and using a bat file to delete security system and application logs. So attackers might use this utility to wipe out the logs as uh, one method of covering their tracks on the target system. So you know. Uh, I have also added some steps so you can just go through this particular parts. So there is a step to clear using logs clear event viewer log bat utility and uh, yes we will have a look into this particular demonstration by which you will get the lot of clarity about this particular utility tool. Well there is one more thing manually clearing event logs so once attacker gain administrative access to the target system they can manually wipe out the log entries corresponding to their activities on both windows and linux computers so the steps to clear event logs on the windows and linux are as follow as you can see that on my screen right now so i have added that as, as well but you know there is a way to clear logs uh, online so i'll show you so yes there is a way to clear online tracks. Uh, attackers can clear online tracks maintained using web history, logs, cookies, cache, downloads, visited time, etc. on the target computer so that the victims can not you know, notice what online activities the attackers have performed. So what can attackers do to clear their online attacks? They can use private browsing, delete history in their address field, disable store history, delete private data. They can clear cookies on the exit. They can clear caches on the exit. They can uh, delete downloads. Uh, they can disable password manager. They can clear data in password manager. They can delete saved sessions. They can delete user JavaScript. They can set up uh, multiple users. They can remove most recently used uh, whatever the tabs they can clear toolbar data from browser they can turn off autocomplete and so on there are a lot of steps which the attackers can do right as an online tracks if they want to clear online tracks yes there are a lot of techniques which I have told you well the next point is track covering tools is there any tool yes track covering tools helps the attackers to clean up all the tracks of computer and internet activities on the target computer track covering tools free cache space uh, you know delete cookies clear internet history and share temporary files delete logs and discard the junk so uh, there are a lot of tools which we can have a look into the lab demonstration session like cc cleaner is the best tool dban privacy eraser wipe uh, bleach bait clear proc and so on there are a lot of tools which we will have a look into the lab demonstration session for these particular uh, tools now the next is uh, defending against covering tracks so you know the various countermeasures to overcome uh, covered tracks are as follow like you know please uh, please uh, make sure that you are listening carefully that activate the logging functionality on all the critical system conduct periodic uh, audits uh, on IT system to ensure that the logging functionality is in uh, accordance with the security policy ensure that the new events do not overwrite old entries in the log files when the storage uh, limit is exceeded then configure the appropriate and minimal permissions necessary to read write write log files store in a critical system and uh, you know i have added all these particular points on one slide that you can just go through it and we can just uh, keep uh, points on these particular 10 points uh, to defend against covering tracks so these are the points which we need to just keep in our mind for defending against any covering tracks